Okay, hi, so in this video we're just the final in a series about switching from Windows to Linux. We're going to optimize Linux Mint, uh, customize it and have a look at some applications. Basic optimizations. So the very first thing you must do after installing Linux is to reduce the swappiness. Uh, this is because Linux has a too large of a tendency to use a swap way too much for normal use so uh, especially after a low amount of RAM you should enter cat slash proc slash sys slash vm slash swappiness The number that shows up is for swappiness, which in my case is 25%, but it is 60% by default. The swappiness is between 0, which is turned off, to 100, which is constantly used. Obviously, content use for the swap file isn't perfect. In fact, it's very slow. And in fact, I can also tell you that 60 is even too high, so we're going to say to 25 by typing xcd admin. Uh, colon slash 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 etc slash sys ctl dot conf and type in an administration password. There we go. And now we can go all the way down here until kernel dot s why SRQs equals 438. Do not change this line, but add vm.swappiness equals 25 below it. To explain what this is, I've added hashtag reduced uh, swappiness. Now, I'll also include this command in the video description. Then save and exit. There's another optimization you could do after that. Uh, which is turning on Z swap, which can create a uh, compressed RAM storage for swap programs, so that they would be uh, placed into this storage space. Uh, standard is turned off to save energy, uh, but you can turn it on uh, if you're experiencing slowness of your system or want to use it for high level applications. Uh, it's going to use up to 20% of RAM which is pretty much perfect for high uh, amount of RAM. If you have a low amount of RAM you could set it to uh, twenty, uh, 40% but no higher because that can cause problems. I'm not going to do that here because again it's going to take more energy due to the compression and the whole reason I saw Linux is really to save energy or at least part of it. Okay so the next thing we do is go to uh, start preferences startup applications and right there we can uncheck any of these applications that we don't need probably unnecessary are uh, mint welcome a welcome screen uh, system reports which analyzes problems which, and isn't really necessary because you'll get error messages anyway if there's a problem and I hope there won't be and finally you can turn off support for Nvidia Prime if you don't have an Nvidia graphics card so now we could speed up the system even further or it's lead to internet by turning off power management from the graphics card. To do that, we're going to type in a terminal iwconfig and check if there's something about power management. It is on here. If it is off, you don't have to do this. Then type sudo sed i column s 
slash 3 slash t end quote uh, space slash etc slash network manager slash conf dot d slash default dash wi-fi dash power safe dash on dot conf Oh, something went wrong. So something went so horribly wrong. Okay, let's try again. Uh, slash a d c slash right in front of it. Pseudo s e d I S three T slash and a space. Enter our password. And then reboot our computer. And here we can see that the uh, power management is really turned off by typing the IP command in the terminal again. Speaking of the internet, I found out that there are some websites that uh, Firefox doesn't handle properly. One of them is Scratch. Uh, if I try to load in my operating system project that I make on Scratch, the Chicago Workstation OS, it will error and take forever to do so. So, if you use websites that require a high amount of interactive HTML elements, I suggest you to go into the terminal and type sudo apt get install chromium. Chromium is sort of like the Linux version of Google Chrome. Uh, I only discovered this difference in Linux when I tried Firefox in Windows and Chromium in Windows. Uh, I've actually used both for quite a considerable amount of time and I found no problems in either browser. However, on Linux, I've discovered that when you use Chromium instead of Firefox for uh, certain uh, websites, it's probably going to be the case that that website will run just fine, uh, even if it requires a lot of interactivity like Scratch does all the time. Let's see how that looks like with my Chicago Workstation OS project that I made in Scratch. Uh, by the way, Scratch is a very beginner friendly and even child oriented programming language. So let's have a look at how it will work. I think it, I, in my experience, Chromium worked just fine even with this high level of a website, uh, unlike Firefox, uh, under Linux of course. So. Let's start it up and see what happens. And yes, it starts up just fine, and it also works just fine in all of my tests. Changing the desktop background. So to change the background of your uh, desktop, we're going to click, right click onto the desktop, and click change desktop background, and then let's hit the add button or oh, actually it doesn't work oh there we go and bliss uh, is an example background I'm going to do uh, I'm actually going to think of the choosing background because I like it so much I'm going to click close and that's it graphical programs Okay, so go on to the graphical programs. They have their own little icon, and there are two I can uh, definitely recommend for 2D uh, graphics and one for 3D graphics. I've used them all on Windows and they work just fine. 
and so they should on Linux, perhaps even better on Windows due to the low system requirements of the operating system. Uh, so here we've got Inkscape which is an SVG uh, image editor and as you can see I can just make shapes and uh, even bitmap drawings like this and it all works just fine and of course I had no problem saving. Another application I could definitely recommend is uh, <coughs> the GNU Image Manipulation Program or GIMP uh, which is like a free version of Photoshop that could do the basic editing moves onto images. Uh, I don't have any to test them now though. Uh, a 3D application I could recommend is Wings uh, 3D uh, which is a 3D application that I've used quite a couple of times on uh, Windows. So with that I've made quite the number of 3D drawings. You can see them on DeviantArt on, in, on every one of them. Uh, they were all made in Windows uh, but I'm going to make some on Linux as well. Uh, of course you could find a rendering program yourself hopefully multimedia so as you can see the uh, XMR drive I always use for backup uh, works just fine on Linux as well uh, despite using NTFS uh, so I have standardized on VLC quite some time ago when I was still in Windows so now I could go into that backup drive uh, there it is and grab one of my old videos to see if it works just fine under Linux as well. Uh, as you can see, the answer is yes, including the uh, audio, of course, even though I can't hear any person because I'm using a microphone right now. Uh, let's then go over to Firefox and have a look at YouTube uh, to see if it works. Uh, right here, uh, pretty old one that isn't applicable to most uh, and Linux users, I mean. So, the advertisement loaded just fine, and so does the actual video scrubbing. Although it sometimes is a little bit slow, it, it does work just fine, as you can see. Um, if I scrub like this, I can actually see every frame, and yeah. Linux I think is a pretty good operating system for multimedia video editing. Now, of course, there are some programs who just flat out have to give up when using Linux. And one of them, for me at least, is VSDC, video editor I always use under Windows. Well, not quite always, but all the time I use OpenShot. But I have standardized on VSDC from last year, the beginning of last year, to when I switched to Linux a couple of days ago. So, the reason I am now weaning off of uh, VSCC is because it is flat out unavailable on Linux. However, I downloaded uh, Shotcut from the program manager, the same place I downloaded some other programs. Uh, all the graphic applications and it works uh, just fine, not just that but very beautifully with scrubbing and moving objects sometimes being a little bit fiddly but it works for the purposes I need to for basic video editing for some animations I do still have to use VSCC under Windows which is why this computer is dual bootable, among other reasons. Uh, Audacity is an audio program I used under Windows and still works just fine under Linux. And in fact, I used for this video to record the intermediaries uh, during the text items. Virtualization. For virtualization, great program to use is VirtualBox. Uh, to install it, you need two uh, packets. One is the actual VirtualBox application and the other one is some extension to allow it to work. So let's go to the Windows XP computer that I've created uh, and of course uh, 
VirtualBox is a free application that I use on Windows and just works just fine on Linux as well. Uh, so let's. Oh, there we go. Windows XP. Uh, I don't have it connected to the internet, I use it purely for retro gaming. Uh, I've got some games on here. Uh, uh, okay, so let's have a look at Roller Coaster Tycoon. Uh, for which I have a disc which I need but I've tested it and it works just fine uh, at least on the default uh, I hope you can actually play it one day uh, speaking of games uh, another game I played a lot on the Windows system at least recently is Flight Gear which is an open source flight simulator uh, which is available for both Windows and Linux uh, Oh, and another speaking of, speaking of virtualization itself, I actually used to run uh, Debian Linux under VirtualBox in Windows before I actually installed Linux on the actual hard drive, Linux Mint, and I used it solely for online banking. I'm planning on removing this uh, actual installation because I already got a secure environment in the form of a Linux installation on the hard drive. Okay, and one more thing before I sign off. Remember that restore disk we've made in part 2? If you didn't, you can rewatch it using the link in the description. We're going to plug it back into the computer, like so. And if you've got a large enough one, you can actually use it for other things than uh, system installation. It is important to have a system restore partition, uh, just in case something goes wrong, but it doesn't have to be, uh, say, 16 or it might even 32 gigabytes large. So what you can do is install Gparted and select your USB flash drive once you've plugged it in. And here I've created two partitions. One is the resource partition, make sure it's pretty small. And then use all the rest of the space to create a data partition where you could put other files in. As of right now I haven't actually put anything in here. Uh, and that is how you uh, can use the USB flash drive we use for installation for something else. See you next time, bye! I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you do please give a thumbs up and share this video with all your friends and perhaps consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you and I'll see you next time.